Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Naturally Kim's Knitting. I'm Kim, and I'm your hostess for this fun little podcast about knitting, spinning, dyeing of yarn, um, a little talk maybe about sewing and crocheting, not much yet, though. Um, I want to welcome everybody who's watching this. If you're a new person, welcome, welcome, and I hope you enjoy what you see. If you're somebody who's been watching for a while, thank you for coming back. I love you guys, and this you're the reason why I do this. And I thank you all for inviting me into your homes for just a little while while we just have a friendly chat about what we've been doing lately. I wish I could hear your responses to things, but the only way I could do that is with comments on the on the bottom of the YouTube um, video or on my blog. Anyways, <laughs> I want to say welcome to Kitten Whiplash especially because she is a new member. Welcome, um, Kitten, and I'm so glad you're here. Today is July 5th, and oh, I should, well, I should say for all my friends in the United States, I hope you had a wonderful, safe, and Oh, just a great 4th of July full of oohs and ahs. We actually had a neighbor down the road who um, was doing a lot. Usually we can just barely see fireworks, but they were so close that we could see their fireworks going off. And, oh, it was wonderful. I'm hoping he had a license because otherwise he, what he did wasn't supposed to be done. But I don't know. I don't know him well enough to know all that. <laughs> Anyways, this is the 73rd episode. 73. Wow. And I'm so glad I'm getting this in today. Um, next week, there will be one. It just will not have as much finished stuff or even as much progress on other things, I don't think. But enough of that. You'll find out more about that next week. Okay, well... Um, I think right here, I'm going to place a picture of my annual temperature afghan, which is the 10 stitch zigzag by Frankie Brown. Um, it's made from Knit Picks wool, I'm sorry, Knit Picks wool of the Andes sports yarn, and the graph that I got for it. I find on weathergan.com. Um, if you're interested in anything from Knit Picks, just click on the link in my blogger, my Naturally Kim's Knitting um, show notes, and it will take you right there. And if you click on that, I get a couple pennies. I'm an affiliate with them and with Amazon. I am working on getting Amazon fixed up so I can, um, it can, I can receive benefits or whatever from those in the UK. I always thought it was open either way, but I just found out yesterday that they offer something called One Link, which will, I can link up the UK with it. And so then you'll be able to order things from Amazon and I'll get a couple pennies. So if you've been, I know, I know there's been one person who's been trying and now we know why you couldn't, but you give me a couple days and I am hoping to get everything hooked together. Um, I worked on a little bit yesterday, but after a while, the words were all going, Ew. so I, I took a little break, but I, I will get those up. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to talk about, oh, and on the annual temperature, Afghan, the picture, the part that is on the bottom, that's what I've done lately, and it it's a lot of the same colors, because last week we were stuck in the 70s, which isn't bad. I love the 70s. This week we've been stuck in the 80s, which is a little bit warmer, still not bad. I mean, I went out and gardened for a little while and all that, and it wasn't too bad. Um, so the bottom parts, they may look like the same colors across. That's because they are. <laughs> so um, my second temperature afghan, which I will put a picture of right here. is uh, my daughter's and it's from 1980 i'm sorry november 1983 through um the beginning of november 1984 and um 
this one, let's see, it's a it's a white right now it's wider than it is long. Because I've just gotten into March with it. And uh we're we've been stuck in the teal green kind of, it's called merino, but it's a kind of a teal green section on that. So if you want to see how far I've gone, you can see that on there. So anyways, um that that was made from nitpick swish DK. Uh, oh I love it. I almost wish I would have made mine out of it, except my friend, Janie, she came over and saw it. She goes, oh, but I love those colors. So, you know, it's, it's just a funny thing. You know, I, I just love my daughter's colors, which I'm glad I like the colors I'm putting in her afghan. I, I just wish I would have thought more about the colors I was putting in mine, but that's okay. Anyways, hers is, well, both of our afghans are made using size 4 needles. Um, and hers is the memory blanket pattern, which is free on Ravelry. Okay, now, the rest of the things I have to show you, I have actual items. So, you remember my plain hospital, I call them, I, my husband laughs because I call them my hospital church socks. Because I started this one in the hospital, and I finish it while I'm at church. And this week, I am just now ready for the, um, the ribbing on it. I've worked and worked and worked on it, and I am now ready for the ribbing, so I'm going to put, oh, maybe 10 rows of ribbing on that, and then that will be ready for somebody at um, either the men's shelter or the rescue shelter or the soup kitchen. So, yay. That's one thing. I'm almost done with it. I'm so tickled. And I do like them. After they've worked up, I just was so disappointed because I couldn't get the yarn to work like I wanted it to. But I do like them. So anyways, those are my plain hospital church socks. Just, uh, just excuse me while I get a drink. I, this is my iced tea. It's nothing special. Sorry. I got an iced tea, but I crunched. Okay, the next thing. Oh, I'm loving this. This is my grandson's sweater. And it's called Tristed, Twisted Trails. Get this around here right so you can see the pattern. Isn't that gorgeous? I love all that intricate cable work. It is so gorgeous. It's going to be beautiful on him too. At the beginning of my podcast, I've been trying to put pictures of my grandchildren. And I think this color is just going to be gorgeous on him. I really do. Let's see if I get it up closer. The colors are kind of washed out on there. Because this is a really bright sunshine or lemon. No, this is more sunshine yellow. The greens are pretty accurate, but the yellow just isn't. So anyways, um, this is the Twisted Trails, and it, it was designed by Linda K. Ross. And I discovered her um, when I was looking for pa somebody to pattern test for. And uh, she asked me to do something, and then I wasn't able to do it because of my thumb, because of my neck. And But I came across this, which is perfect for my grandson. So I'm going to her site more often on Ravelry. Linda, Lisa. I think I said Linda, and it's Lisa K. Ross, and it's made out of my Napier's Knits yarns, of course. You know, you know how that is. <laughs> okay, loving it, though. The next thing, I, I'm loving everything I'm making right now. It's just, I, which is nice when that happens. Um, I want to show the right side of this. Had a, had a mini avalanche and I don't want my stitches to come off so I cannot spread this out where was I last week I'm sorry I, sh I have the marker on here oh I see okay it's probably on the wrong side but hey um, you can see the little TARDIS marker well I've gotten from there all the way up to the needles done this past week I'm on the border right now and I wish I could show the entire thing to you stretched out, but my needles are not long enough. And this yarn slips off the needles easily, just like that. 
my puppy Ginger loves to sit on my lap when I'm working on these, on this. And I always tell her, you can be up here, but if you make my stitches slip off, you're in trouble. And every time my stitches slip off, I'm trying to pick up yarn with my feet. It wasn't working. <laughs> so that is the amulet shawl. Um, I don't know how that happened. That's the amulet shawl by Helen Stewart of the Shawl Society. And this is made from the yarn that I got from Wool Boppy. And it is 100% wool, but it, oh, it's soft. It's going to feel so nice around my neck. When I work at the church, quite often, it's a little chillier in there than what I would like it to be. And so to have a shawl or something to take in with you that's warm and soft, it's just perfect. Just perfect. So that is my amulet shawl, and I am so happy. I said last week, I love working with beads now. I It always intimidated me, and that was one of my um, New Year's resolutions was I wanted to work with beads this year. I have, and I love it. So, yay. I'm glad that Helen Stewart put together a shawl pattern that she has a couple that have beads on them. And if now I can't wait to try another one. I'll have to get more beads because I've used them all. Now, this is a sock that's been a little neglected this week. This is the one that came from, the, the yarn comes from a sock blank from um, Gail's, Gail's Art. Um, but this is the sock, and it really hasn't gone much farther than last week. I don't have a progress marker on it. But maybe you can see the little intricate pattern I'm putting on there. I don't know if you can or not. Anyways, so I've gone, let's see. I had a long tail, so I wrapped it around the sock blank. <laughs> so I mark where the halfway point is on this sock blank. So I have this much more to put into a sock. And I know it'll work, and I know it'll make a long cuff. And I love both those things. So, yay. And I love this color. I love how it kind of looks like um, the ocean or something like that. I I love it. What can I say? It's beautiful. And uh, the pattern is just one that I wanted to try. And I seem, I seem to enjoy it. I don't know that this was the best yarn because you can't really see the pattern. But if, if I happy with the way it turns out I will then publish it but right now I'm just waiting to see how it turns out all the way up the, up the cuff sorry my nose itched okay that's everything that's on my needle so you might be saying wait Kim where's your chemo caps where's your kitty cat socks well guess what I'm not happy with the one sock because you can see the stitches too much I must have made them too tight but, ta-da! Oops, this one's bashful. There we go. Kitty cat socks. Yay! My husband just says they're, they're um, sheep with whiskers. But I don't think so. I think they look kind of... This one does look like a bully cat. <laughs> And I tried them on yesterday and they fit comfortably. I just really started doing, this isn't a lot of color work, but I just started doing color work last week, or last week, last year. That was my resolution last year. And uh, on socks, you just have to watch it. I did tell my husband back then, I'm never making another pair of socks from color work. And I would, I'll always end up saying, never say never. Because there's been things I've said never about that I have been it's come around to bite me, and it's been the best things that happened to me. My puppy was a never again, because I would I was never going to have a Jack Russell Terrier. Well, she's half. <laughs> she's half Jack Russell and half Lhasa Apso. Unfortunately, well, fortunately, unfortunately, that's the side we see the most often of her is the Jack Russell Terrier. I'm a little thirsty today. No, I got, except for tucking in the, the thread at the end, which I'm going to do today, 
I have two chemo caps. And this is the last one from um, Felicity Darkside. I have no more. I had a little tiny bit of this orange left. And it wasn't enough to do anything with. So I did pretty good. I got three caps out of that dark side. And this is a bigger one because, you know, kids are all different sizes, different ages. And then I made, because you never know where a child's going to be, I made one of chunky weight. And if that yarn looks at all familiar, if you were watching when I made my grandchildren at their diplodoca, diplodoca I guess there was two of them. Um, this was one of their the yarns that I used for the diplodocus. And this is um, a bulky Napier's Knits yarn, but I did not, I've not, I didn't keep the formula for it or anything because this was for my grandchildren. And so I think they deserve one, in a, one of a kind yarn. This, one, this hat isn't, but the yarn was. So anyways, okay, wow. You know, I have so many things that, I, that, have, that make me happy. <laughs> my granddaughter wanted to Skype me the other day because one of them was to show me what she made in, in art class, which it was a snowflake, but she put every color of the rainbow in it. And I can't remember what the other thing was. She was right now, right then, fascinated with the flashlight. Then at home last week, they made lots of toys and homemade toys and all this. So um, a lot of that is in my daughter's blog, which I usually get to later. I'll mention it here. Um, Beyondtheschoolyard.com. And there is a link to it on my um, show notes. So feel free to check her out. She has got some of the most imaginative ideas they made, um, they were talking about, they're getting ready for the eclipse that's coming soon. And uh, so my daughter got shaving cream and put a little blue food coloring or color safe paint or some, something in it. And my granddaughter was able to smear it around on paper and so she made a nebula. Oh, I know what else she wouldn't tell me. They started um, butter, they started raising butterflies. Well, yeah, they bought a butterfly kit. And so my granddaughter got to see it go from the little caterpillar to what I would have called a cocoon with her because I wouldn't have thought her age would have been able to handle chrysalis and then butterflies. And the butterflies, they let go the other day and then they planted some marigolds outside for them. But I, I asked my granddaughter, I said, so were they in a cocoon? And her mom turns to her and says, what, what were they in? And she goes, a chrysalis. And I'm sitting there going, how this little three-year-old can wrap her mouth around a chrysalis is amazing. <laughs> I had some sixth graders that might have had issues with that word. Okay, and something, oh, well, there was a recipe I made last week, which was called, it was called apple door pie, I believe. And it, I, I get, I have a whole bunch. This started when I went to the UK. Everywhere I would go, I would pick up one of these little cookbooks. This one is Scottish country recipes. This isn't where it came from. It came from the Kentish, favorite Kent, Kentish dishes or something like that. I could look it up. But, um, favorite Kentish recipes. And I tell you, it was good. It was just... You, you took chicken off the bone and let the bones um, make a nice broth. And you would, with the chicken meat, you put it in a pie tin. Then you put some bacon, it did, not cooked, on top of that. And the chicken wasn't cooked. On top of that, and you sliced two hard boiled eggs and put that on top of there. Then you put the rest of the chicken, because you only used half on the bottom. And then you top it with the pie crust. Now, you do need the broth at the end because when you pull that out of the oven, there is no moisture in that pie. So what we did then was we took the broth, which they suggest serving it with the broth, and we would just pour it on it. And I thought it was delicious. I didn't ask my husband what he thought. So these little cookbooks, I love them. I've only got like half of them. I was going through yesterday and went, oh my goodness, look at all these I don't have. So I went to paperbacks 
swap because that's where I got quite a few of them from. And I was putting in titles and I've got found three of them someplace. So very happy. Okay, so the other thing that made me especially happy was I have winners for my books. <coughs> these books came from Dover. And these were the ones I reviewed. And the wonderful Wizard of Oz. It goes to our brand new member, Kitten Whiplash. How about that? Congratulations, Kitten Whiplash. Then, I'm going to get this one wrong because I do anytime she's won in the past. World comes from, I'm going to spell it because I think it's L-M-E-C-O-L-L. -L. Her name's Linda. So if you heard me, please, um, this is for you, Linda. Yay! And then, Try Linda got the kitten book, which I showed my granddaughter and she loved it. But, you know, I can't crochet, so... <laughs> So, you, you three need to contact me and give me your addresses, and those books will be out in the mail as soon as possible. As with any other prizes or anything, you have two weeks to respond. If I don't hear from you, I'll give them to somebody else that, were, that responded. Okay? So, Kitten Whiplash, um, L-M-E-C-O-L-L, -L, <laughs> and try Linda. Please contact me. Through Ravelry, it's just fine. Now, to my book reviews. So, in Goodreads, I don't know why my mouth is so thirsty. I'm so sorry. I got cotton mouth. Um, in Goodreads, I'm with a group called Christian Fiction Bloggers, I think it's called. Anyways, every quarter they have a different contest involving reading books and everything. So this last time, it's been, um, I want to say continents, but it was travel destinations totally, but it, they would give you a general thing of continents. Well, we were in um, South America, and so they wanted something that was had a mainly green cover. That, that There was five different parts to it, and I have four other people that are part of the group. So I had the perfect book. It was called Siren Song. And let me see if I can bring it up. Because I had it up, but I think I took it back down. Because I want I, I go to get the publisher wrong. <laughs> it is a Christian book. It's a Christian fantasy book. Thomas Nelson. Thomas Nelson makes some wonderful, wonderful or publishes wonderful, wonderful Christian books. And this was one of them. So Siren Song. It's a fantasy book. It was the third book in the series. And I do highly recommend you go back and read it from the first book because I hadn't, and it took me a little bit of time to get into the characters. But once I did, oh, I loved them. I just love that book. So that's Siren Song. That's one of the books I've read. I've also read Oh, I closed that out. Um, okay, I have to go to my show notes because I can't remember what it's called. Coffee for your heart. If you remember years ago when they used to, well, they still make them, the um, chicken soup for the souls, and then you'd have all these other books that came out. Well, this is a little Christian devotional, Coffee for Your Heart, and it has the most uplifting little things for you to do or to read each day. Scripture based and it's so wonderful. Then oh they're getting ready to end this group of characters which means we'll get to see them play from right at the beginning because when Critical Role first started they had been playing at home for I think it was two years maybe three years. Then they were asked to stream it on um, Geek and Sundry through Twitch. And that's how I started watching it. And it's been a couple of years now. And it's, oh. What I love is since they're not acting out anything, 
I could sit here and I could do something like that cable sweater or something that's a little complicated because I don't have to watch the screen because they are just the the dungeon master Matt Mercer he he well all the people on there are voice voiceover actors so they do cartoons they do games things like this where they do the voices for the characters and he can make the storyline come to life so much because he changes his voice for each character and if he comes back to that character later on the voice goes right back to what it was before oh. so you know it's just wonderful and the characters I don't have to watch to see who it is because each of them have personalized their characters to with their voices and oh it's just wonderful and for me it's wonderful if you like fantasy or if you like Dungeons and Dragons it, it is wonderful to go there and just see what's going to happen every every week now um, I'm not going to go through all the rules for the craft alongs we have going on but we do have two craft alongs going on one is to put together crafting from a pattern book or crafting with beads if you find a pattern in a pattern book and it's crafting with beads, it works together. Um, that's what got me inspired to work with my bead is because we were doing this. I'm not going to get it done in time or I would have then gone right to a pattern out of a book. But I will probably be able to get one started. Probably. So anyways, that craft along ends July 31st. Then, the one that's running the entire year is my annual temperature craft along. And both of these can be knitting, spinning, crocheting, weaving, whatever, as long as um, they meet the criteria for that craft along. So anyways, I've, I've got a couple prizes for these things, so I hope people are going to be putting things in. Right now, both of them are kind of blank, so please put things in. <laughs> okay, um, this is where I'm going to let you know where you can find me. On Ravelry, my personal account is Napier's Knits. Um, that's where if you would want to befriend me or um, send me an email or a PM, you do it through there. And then I also, my Etsy store is also Napier's Knits. Then I'm Naturally Kim's Knitting. Also, I have the Ravelry group. And that's the way I am on YouTube, Blogger. Facebook, and WordPress. All of those are Naturally Kim's Knitting. You can find my show notes on the Facebook, I'm sorry, not on Facebook, on Blogger and on, and on WordPress as Naturally Kim's Knitting. Um, I, can't, I can't figure out how to put links on YouTube, so I'm just going to give you the address of my Blogger blog on there so that you can go to it. Then you can watch you can click on my video on Facebook too and it will take you right to the YouTube site. And then finally, last but not least, I feel like I've been going on forever today and I, it's about, been about the same time. But last but not least, on Instagram, you can find me as Knitten underscore Kim. I'm going to put, take a picture today of my socks and my hats. I hate to put them on there first before I show you guys. Because you guys, you know, you're my friends. I know who you are. And I'm so happy that you, you tune in and put up with my jibber-jabber for this whole half hour that I try to keep it under. So after I see you guys, that's when I go to Instagram and put my pictures on. So anyways, um, it's the end. I've made it through everything. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week this coming week. I hope all of your projects are successful. If you make any mistakes, I hope they're easy to correct. I love you. And big hugs to all of you. Bye-bye. <laughs>